Well, a very good afternoon to everybody on this beautiful, sunny, sunny Saturday, Catterday afternoon. Well, my name is Cedric. I'm the naturalist here on a Rusty and Muscles and Paul. He's going to be the cam up with his little teddy bear. Uh, anyway, I don't, I don't, I don't. anyway, so yeah, we are actually looking forward to this afternoon's sunset safari. Uh, I think it's going to be a beautiful sunset later on. Uh, I'm just coming down the drainage line here at the moment uh, from Gary Dam. I'm trying to follow up on um, some of all that female line that came over the dam all this morning. And I don't see much here. She might have gone into this drainage line. It is very thick, very difficult, but I will just uh, take a a look around here yeah, and see if we get a lucky. That's why I'm at one, one of the water holes here, just to see if there's any paw prints around here. But furthermore, let's uh, introduce the others. Uh, well, on Wendy, we're gonna have a uh, Chad and a uh, Panda, and down there in uh, the Eastern Cape, we've got Eric and uh, Morgan. And of course, our beautiful team in uh, Johannesburg, our directors for this afternoon is gonna be Luanda. Jared and a Chulu and our tech guru there is I think Simba and our tech guru this side is Showmax But yes, this is live. This is interactive So if you've got any comments and questions that you want to send through and if you are watching on the wild earth website Make sure that you do register so you can send those comments and questions through for us this afternoon Or if you want to just have a chat with us Make sure that you go on to your YouTube channel or you go on to hashtag wild earth on Twitter all known as X And uh, we can all have a little chat there, but yep I think I'm just taking a look. As I say, it is a very warm afternoon. So I'm going to take a look at some of these little pans around here just to see if that line nest did not uh, pop up uh, somewhere around here. Or else we might find some interesting things around these water holes on a hot afternoon. Maybe some elephants, maybe warthogs busy wallowing, uh, maybe a nice buffalo or two or 10 or 30 or 100. You never know. But yes, I'm looking forward to this afternoon. Ooh. Caitlin Boss says, do you see the, the spider wa hunting wasp here? Not really. There's one that's drinking water. No, not there, you can't see. Okay, yeah, it's a bit difficult. Uh, but yeah, K Caitlin, it's Saturday, cat today, and I'm actually looking forward to this afternoon. All right, but nothing much yet at this one. Ooh, there he goes. A nice big spider hunting wasp that just came to have a little drink around here at the, the pan. That was nice. All right, let's uh, move on. I think I'm going to just continue a little bit uh, down here. There's another pan this side, just to see if we're going to get the lucky around there. Wow, it's it's warm. It is warm indeed. All right, you ready, Paul? All right. Well, we're going to get to this other pan. Let's go and take a look at the weather at all locations this afternoon. afternoon good afternoon everybody welcome 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 have a look here we're sitting here with some zebras here in Amakala private game reserve in the Eastern Cape the windy windy Eastern Cape hello my name is Eric joined by Morgan behind the camera and this afternoon we're gonna be your eyes and ears as we try and navigate these windy <laughs> windy conditions here at Amakala We've got some water buck and we've got some zebra here. We've got the best of both worlds. Water buck is a little bit more curious than the zebra. Zebra have obviously been watching us for a little bit longer. The water buck have only just appeared. I don't think they knew that we were here. They probably heard the car coming. They were standing behind the bush, so they may have wondered what the noise was, so they've come to investigate. We've got two females there and one beautiful beautiful male have a look at him he's gorgeous if you look carefully at his nose if you look carefully at both their noses you'll find that it looks like a heart a little heart shape it's pretty cool 
one of their very, very cute little features. But uh, yes, very, very much focused on us. <laughs> he doesn't look very happy now. I don't seem to be very much, very phased by the wind. Mali, I'm also very excited to see what other sightings we can get to this afternoon. Um, I'd hoped that we may be able to head over towards uh, the last location of those Ellies and see where they got up to. Um, but uh, yeah, we're not exactly too sure. We'll have a look. We'll maybe go that way and see. If we can't come lucky with them, obviously we'll try anything that we can find. Uh, we may try and see if we can't relocate those lions that we had this morning. Yeah, these guys are not happy <laughs> with us being here. That's fine. Zebra, I think I'm just trying to deal with the wind. It's a... Uh, a uh, fairly cool-ish wind. It's not cold, but it's definitely not warm. Uh, coming from the south, it's blowing sort of north, mm, northeast. More, I'd say north northeast. Really, it's not really going in between. Um, but yeah, just like it was this morning, carrying these clouds at an extreme pace, setting a pretty cool atmosphere but this morning it was very strange we started off with overcast clouds and towards the end of the drive there were no clouds they were all gone now the clouds are back again but so uh, are they going to stick around or hmm well, that water buck just sat down there and normally antelope don't sit down unless they are comfortable if, unless they know that they're not going to be ambushed, they will not sit down. This male waterbuck has not broken eye. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I spoke too soon. Okay, now that he's figured out that we're no longer a threat, he now looks off in a different direction. See that beautiful, beautiful coat of his really kept. No, he's not satisfied with the safety of this area. I think he's him and his ladies are going to move off fairly quickly. Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. It's a good thing we don't have a roof anymore. We would have been a, pair, a hot air balloon in the sky right now. Yeah, elements. <laughs> okay, everyone, you know that thunder's a bit of a no-no for us. I'm a... Oh, it's attacking, attacking the monitor lizard. <gasps> Let's just watch this play out before... <gasps> She's trying to protect her babies. Took the birds out of it. <laughs> He's going to push this whole tree over. No ways. Casual. And look how he's looking at us. Guys, that is unbelievable.
They sort of zip them up. They're little things called barbicels and barbecues. A snake, eh? Have you got a snake? Mm. Oh, apparently that's, I mean, he's got a snake and that's what he's hopping around at. Let me check with my binoculars. Oh, yeah, it's a little, look like a little red-lipped herald. That's what he's hopping at. Thanks, G. I did not see that. Have you, oh, you see the, the snake striking at him. How cool is that? You? I wonder what he was hopping for. I didn't pick it up on the camera, but I can see it with my binos. You close. <laughs> Do the standoff. That is the most assertive gosling I think I've ever seen. Oh my goodness. It seems to be the one gosling in particular. I've actually not seen that before where one keeps going after another species. All right, so I've got this line. Couldn't have come at a better time. We've got a mother cheetah. She's running into this herd of topi, wildebeest, and zebra. And who knows? Maybe she's spotted a youngster that she thinks she can single out. It seems like she may have. We are here on a bumble now, and just checking out the open patches of grass, looking for our general game that we can usually find in this area. <coughs> now, okay. Uh, the wind is very strong. We're also driving straight into the wind. So what we'll do is we'll have a little look see here maybe we can see some birds sitting on top of the tree some interesting ones and try and hide myself from this gale force wind very quiet in the dune forest this afternoon it's 
been quite quiet recently, but we're seeing more and more animals returning. I'm not too sure if it was a food thing or if it was a predator thing or if it was a water thing, but the animals just kind of decided to up and leave from this area and it was almost vacant. You'd find birds and dacre, that's pretty much it for this area. But uh, now the zebra have started to come back, of course, and the water buck are here. And the kudus have always been here. They just decide to run around whenever we see them. They don't like to sit, don't like to stand still. Maggie Amakala is really, it really is a beautiful place. There's so much diversity here, and I think that's what makes it so, so special. Very special indeed. Now, there's a possibility, a slight possibility, that the elephants could have started making their way this way. Um, a lot of food source for them here, and they know that. They definitely know that. When the bulls come up here, they normally hang around here for quite some time. You know, there's a, a lodge and some other series of pans where they can go and access water and some mud if they want to throw some mud over the, all over their bodies. But uh, for the most part, there is lots and lots of food for them here. Now that the giraffe have also kind of moved out of the area they've saw sort of moved down towards the basin um they've kind of there's less competition for food i suppose and the giraffe are usually in this area they're normally here for months and months and months so it's very it's it's very cool that they've now sort of made that long walk all the way down to the basin because that's not usually where we're where we're able to find them. In the basin, there's lots of nice grass, but not so much browsing. And obviously, we know giraffe eats leaves off trees. That makes them browsers. We're going to continue. Hopefully find some animals in a very uh, sheltered place from the wind. In the meantime, we're going to send you over to Chad to say hello. A very good afternoon to everybody that's tuning in and welcome aboard Wendy. My name is Chad, on camera today we've got Panda and as usual we are out and about doing what we do best. So it is a extremely hot afternoon uh, here on Juma so I've decided as Trish said a little bit earlier to head over towards an area that we're going to look for some elephants. I think it's a great afternoon to see some swimming elephants just because of how hot it is now. So we are going to head down towards the southern part of Juma and see if we are able to find any tracks of a herd. One of the tech guys, Max, um, Show Max, he told me that he saw some elephants a little bit earlier on today um, around one of the towers that he was doing some work on. So I'm going to start heading in that direction and see if I can't find that herd. He said it was quite a large herd, so hopefully we'll be able to find some tracks and then we'll be able to find the elephants. They might be heading towards Treehouse Dam. Franny, I'm also looking forward to Excuse me, looking forward to lots of surprises. You never know what we're going to find on safari. I mean, I can say I'm looking for elephants, but if a leopard walks into the road and I'm going to say no. So we're looking for everything, but my main focus will be elephants. And the reason we're going into that area is because there was elephants seen. I've also got a very good feeling about this afternoon. I'm not too sure what the, the feeling is, but I've got a good feeling in my bones about 
something very very exciting that's gonna happen on safari this afternoon whether it be with me Cedric or Eric we'll just have to wait and see I know Cedric is looking for that lioness that was seen on the dam cam this morning and he's got tracks of it for now so I'm also just keeping a lookout to see if maybe it's moved in this direction where we are but it doesn't seem like it and also as Trishala said on uh, on safari I was just behind the camera just observing I mean the dogs might come back uh, there's lions that are on our property somewhere the chances of tortoise pan or Mawati still being around but actually all that uh, exciting stuff with the two male leopards actually happened just in front of us where we are so I'll just drive a little bit slower as area and look out for any tracks that I might see of these leopards I know tortoise pan male did go into little gauri a little bit earlier on yesterday evening so he might be away but Mulwati could still be around I've been seeing these trucks come down the road and I wasn't 100% certain of what they were but it looks like it was a small herd of zebra that came down the road and maybe headed towards the waterhole to go for a drink. Sometimes you'll be so very surprised when you, you see trucks in the road from the vehicle like this. You look at them, you think, oh, it might be a lion. Often it is a zebra. They've got a very similar to a a horse and they've got a, a frog we call it in the track which is like a triangle at the back of their their track and often that just throws me off and I'm not a hundred percent sure what it is but these are definitely zebra tracks in the road maybe it's those three zebra that I saw this morning with the wild dogs on quarantine in that open clearing where the dogs missed the herd of impalas. There is tracks of one elephant bull on the road here, going down the road. So we are now heading in the right direction. And you'll often find that elephant bulls will follow herds of elephants. The tracks went off the road there. We will often find elephant bulls trailing herds of elephants, especially if that bull is in must. And the, that must, the heightened testosterone, and he's ready to mate. So if there is a female that is an estrus, he'll follow there. That was the name Lungi. It sounded like Lungi. I apologize if I if I do get that name wrong, but Lungi, I would say for me personally, it is Lungi, there we go. Um, I would say most exciting to track, it's a tough one, it's a tough decision because leopards are difficult to track, but if you successfully track it down, amazing. Dogs, very hard to track. You know, dogs very hard to track so personally my favorite and to track and find and it's exciting is lions tracking a pride of lions and knowing like sort of putting together the whole story of what's happened where the prides moved they've hunted zebras here they missed they continued they hunted impalas here they lay down in the road they went to this water hole to drink they left the water killed a buffalo and so I would definitely have to say that lions are a firm favorite 
for me to track down just because it's I mean a lot easier to track down a pride of lions than it is to track down a leopard or wild dogs but something to follow while they are on the move would definitely be wild dogs and Lungi if you weren't watching this morning it might be worth trying to have a look at the highlight reels from this morning I had some entertaining times with the wild dogs We tracked this female line down. We got her um, yeah, in uh, the Molawati drainage line. I'm just trying to see if we can get a better position on her. I don't know how we're going to do this, so um, Paul. I don't know. Like that. Like that. Yeah. yeah, let's do it that way. That's going to be the best for now. Um, yeah, I just want to see. I'm not too sure exactly which female this is. So we just she's by herself. This is a. The lioness that came all the way down from Gary Dam this morning and she's moved all the way down Twin Dams Road and she's just, uh, we followed her tracks here into the Molawati drainage line and we've uh, found her pretty much lying here on the uh, side of the bank here at Twin Dams <coughs> but in the drainage line sorry I just uh, actually, uh, funny enough I jumped off the vehicle oh there she goes you know, she looks like she had something to eat I saw her tracks going up and down here jumped off the vehicle just to double check and next moment got back into the vehicle walked, drove like about three meters forward and then uh, a fine young a gentleman known as William that's uh, sitting behind me as uh, she said Cedric there is a lioness right there and uh, yeah well we got her but now this is all we're gonna get for now um, I'm just going to see if we're going to try other ways, but it's going to be very difficult. I'm thinking maybe I've got a different uh, strategy in this. I'm just going to wait till we are not live because it's just going to take a little bit of a work to get through to the other strategy or to the other area that I want to try and uh, get to to view her. Sarah, yes, Ketterday done right, indeed, indeed. And it's funny that it's just this lonely lioness. Um, as I said, I'm not too sure who it is. Um, we did quickly get a little facial shot there. I'm hoping that we got some screenshots on that uh, moment. And, uh, and then we can just maybe reposition very shortly. But I don't think we're going to get too much out of this. It's a very hot afternoon. And I think she's enjoying this shady spot here under one of the spike thorn bushes as you can see panting quickly you can see the full, full belly is, is she lactating or maybe it might be a female from the Kumas that's looking for an area for youngsters I'm not too sure uh, I can see a teeth there no it's, I'm just trying just no it doesn't no that's not I think it's a full belly maybe from food maybe she caught something during the day yeah in the drainage line but panting quickly trying to speed up that metabolism to digest whatever's in her belly as well as it's a very hot afternoon so a nice way just to regulate her temperature and like your dogs and cats at home when they get hot they pant <sighs> so exactly what you're saying just to try and cool herself down all right well we're going to try and reposition yeah I think let's head over to Chad uh, to see what's going to be happening on his afternoon sunset safari Thanks, Sitters, and well done for finding that. Oh, sorry, I'm taking the wrong road. Um, well done on finding that lioness, and tracking her down. And I've just driven a small section of the southern boundary to check that the herd of elephants hasn't crossed out. 
and I didn't see any tracks of them crossing out so now we're gonna just weave our way through this area maybe stop once or twice listen out for any breaking branches and hopefully we'll be able to then find a herd of elephants for everybody there's also a couple of nice little pan systems in this area there's just a depression in the ground that's holding quite a lot of water and so they might even go there for a wallow it's not a good place to have a pool party and just because there isn't enough space for all of them but you might find one or two of the youngsters might wallow in a little puddle like that And also sometimes, I mean, in like an area, for example, that Cedric's in now, in the Mulawati drainage line, that's also a good place to look for elephants because they do really love the shade. I mean, this is the hottest day that we have now had for, how long, Panda? Four days. Probably four days. It's been overcast, rainy, overcast, rainy. Liesl, that's very kind of you, saying that you do feel bad for the animals during this heat, but Liesl, they've all, they have all adapted in order to survive this heat. I mean, they've all got ways to cool off elephants going to wallows, rhinos going to wallows to uh, cool off lions and leopards and cheetahs finding a shaded spot to get out of the sun. So, I mean, they all do they, they do all cool themselves down in different ways and they're able to survive in this heat but thanks very much for your your care about all the animals maybe we should get a a small room and be able to turn an aircon on for them then it'll be much easier for us to find them might be a, a good way to trap all the leopards and lions and wild dogs and interesting birds and things like that. It would make the naturalist's job a little bit easier. Could just set up a tripod also for the cameramen. Boom, easy. Release them when it's cooler. It does look a little bit on the tired side, doesn't it? His eyes look very, very exhausted. Oh my goodness. Oxpack, you're almost the size of that in Bala's head. Be gentle. Just be slow. Still learning. Here we go. Getting another spot that the Impala can't often reach, right near where the horns is just starting to push out. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, it's a little one. It's a juvenile. And it's also joining the party, waiting for somebody to feed it. Yes, flap your feathers. Oh, shame. <laughs> I can't get rid of them. <laughs> Look at them, they're having an argument. No, you leave me alone. I said, don't go there. Shame, little one. You might have to buck and rear to be able to get those birds off. Holding on nice and tight to your fluffy fur. Right, so we almost at that little valley area where our elephants were. Somewhere down here they were coming up. That's where we had them this morning. So this is where we're going to start our search party. Uh, it's going to sit here and listen a little bit. Uh, maybe we can hear some sticks in... Some sticks being broken. Maybe some vocalization. Every now and then elephants do make noises. Most of the time they'll make their noises when they're together, uh, not always while they were feeding. Um, mm, most of the time when they're moving and when they buy water holes, you'll find that there'll be an awful lot of, of vocalization sometimes there. Otherwise, it normally... Yeah, you know, normally when they're very active and they're moving fairly quickly through the thicket, when they're feeding, they're almost silent. 
a whole herd, a whole herd of elephants feeding quietly will sneak up behind you and surround you without you knowing. It's actually quite scary how they do it. It's happened to me before where we, we had a, a sundowners uh, in one of the valleys and uh, the elephants snuck up behind us. Swas, I think that was the name. Um, wind effects, the movement of wildlife in the way that prey can only hear from one direction. So they cannot hear predators coming from upwind. You know, because the, the, the scent as well as the sound of the animal is carried downwind. Now, if you approach from downwind and I'm standing upwind from, from you, I'm not going to hear you coming um, from whatever, well, if it's behind me or next to me. Most of the animals will face downwind because they can hear what's coming from them upwind and somewhat to the side, it's what's downwind that they cannot hear. So they'll, <clears throat> you'll find that they'll mostly face that direction and uh, their ears will also be facing that direction as well. The lions will use the wind to their advantage to hunt and uh, animals will also use the wind to their advantage to stay out of the jaws of lions. Well, we've got some, a nice herd of elephants. And they slowly move. And poor, I think it's a nice little ring road, this. I'm going to quickly take a look around this ring road. All right, we will be back with uh, that lioness. And it looks like Chella to me. So it looks like Chella from the Nkuhuma Pride. Why is she alone? Is she... Mm, interesting. Maybe, maybe she's got little ones inside. You never know. And she always comes into the last time we followed her into that drainage line as well. Sorry, Elise. We're just going to go around. Thank you. Ooh. Hello, okay, don't worry, we're just going past. Hello. I'm gonna go around and get a nice little walk by from the a beautiful herd of elephants. Just hold on gentlemen. Oh it's just a fly. Just a fly watch out there. There we go. Alrighty then. Welcome back everybody and amazing Cedric found that lioness as well as a herd of elephants fantastic stuff it's already turning out to be a great sunrise a sunset safari apologies so I think now that Cedric does have that beautiful big herd of elephants I'm gonna start heading up towards the northeastern corner towards uh, that waterhole up there and go and see what we can find around that area 
Um, I know there were trucks of the Talon Breakaway Pride up in that area. I know that there is also is also at Buffalsook Dam. So it might be quite nice to go and catch up with that three-banded plover and show everybody those eggs. Wouldn't that be special? I know Trish did uh, speak a little bit about it on uh, on safari, but to show you all those eggs would be fantastic. It is very, very hot this afternoon. I think it's the first time that I've, I've been sweating in the last uh, three days. Sandy is about 1,500 kilometers, which is probably around like 900 miles, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around about there. It's, it's about 16 hours by car from Juma to Amakala. So he is a fair distance from where we are currently. It's all the way in the Eastern Cape. The essay the other day that he would really like to visit Kruger. I would really like to visit Amakala. Those are great things, Eric. I would just like to see Amakala and what it has to offer. I know Eric done fantastic things about it, so it would be amazing also to go there. Maybe, maybe Eric should come to Juma. And I must go to Amakala. Wouldn't that be amazing? But for now, I'm going to send you back over to Cedric and see what's happening. Thanks, Chad. Oh, sorry that we did lose uh, Rusty's signal again a little bit earlier. But yeah, we have got a nice big female elephant that is just busy feeding along one of the drainage lines here. It's actually a nice herd. But most of them have gone past us. Most of them, actually the entire herd has already gone past into the drainage line. So it's a little bit difficult to get in there after them. So we'll just enjoy this um, last big female here. And then after this, then we'll try and make our way back to where that lioness is to see if we can get a better position that side. Nothing better than spending a good, uh, good quality time with uh, these beautiful, magnificent grey mammals. Oh, they're so gentle. All of them doing their their business for the afternoon, just moving along and feeding. Looks like they were already at some water hole a little bit earlier. And beautiful female though. So of course in a in a breeding herd like this it'll... So I just heard a funny noise there, did you hear that? Oh, it's coming from like Twin Dam side. So I just had a very strange noise there. And so in a breeding herd like this is pretty much controlled by a matriarch, usually like the oldest female that's part of this family. And she's got the most experience. And she'll be the one that uh, will lead them to the water holes and to the next areas for feeding, as well as decide when to stop for a 20, 30 minute nap. I think it sounds like maybe another elephant that's further down towards Twin Dam side.
Greater Kruger National Park has got plenty of elephants. I think our last count was around about 17, 18,000 elephants in throughout the entire Greater Kruger National Park. And they say our carrying capacity for this 2.2 million hectare park is around about 12, 13,000 elephants. And that 12, 13,000 elephants has actually been taken <coughs> has actually been taken down and on dry, dry times. More like the drought times, <coughs> that number will be 12 to 13,000. But if it's good rains, good uh, good season of rain and all that, maybe for the last three, four, five years. I'm sure the numbers for the carrying capacity should be actually a little bit higher. So I always say, maybe if it's 17, 18,000 elephants in, uh, in the entire Greater Kruger National Park, uh, it's not too bad. I mean, we're not, it's not a train smash at all. Yes, they can do a lot of destruction, but uh, it's not like, you know, we're going to lose a lot, of, uh, a lot of vegetation, a lot of trees just once off now. And it's going to take many, many years. Now I can see another elephant slowly but surely approaching us here. I'm just going to take a look at what this one does. Looks like a male that's following them. <clears throat> I think maybe that was the noise that I heard a little bit earlier. Now he's cutting, cutting into the bush now. Uh, Jade, I haven't really seen, uh, I've seen tuskers, yeah, for sure. I've seen big tuskers, um, especially, <clears throat> I remember like working on more on the, the eastern boundary of uh, the Sabi Sands at one of the lodges. We used to have nice big tuskers coming through. Um, I think in the last year or two, you've seen a impo, some nice tuskers, you know, some decent ones, thick tusks. Not the longest of tusks, but we've seen um, male elephants with, you know, nice thick, thick tusks. And I, I can say like mid, mid length, you know, compared to a long, long tusk. So, yeah, no, I've seen that. But the more you go up to like the northern Kruger Park, go to Shungwetsi and places like Pafuri and Punda Maria, those areas. Oh, there's some nice tuskers in that area. Beautiful, beautiful males. Hanging around those fever forests, fever tree forests. Alright, well, <clears throat> I'm going to slowly but surely start making my way towards that line nest again. See if we can get a better position there. And while we do that, I think let's head over to Amakala down in the Eastern Cape to see what uh, 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 Eric is up to. That's the one. See that the mist and the, the not so good weather is rolling in there and the blue sky has disappeared. But in between us and that beautiful little bit of mist, is what we call the Grand Canyon. And that is one giant, giant erosion valley. Have a look at that. We call it Grand Canyon because of the red soil, which is rich, rich in iron oxide. Gives it that beautiful, beautiful red color. Now you can see all the little erosion kind of uh, 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 towers in a sense and uh, those will be all the hard parts of the soil there the soft parts of the soil have all been eroded away with water over the years every year more and more and more and more soil is eroded if you stand at the very top there on the very left hand side you can't exactly stand right at the edge because it's almost like uh, it, there's a little kind of cave underneath so the soil is slowly breaking away there and uh, it's not a shallow shallow valley it's quite deep it's probably about 50 uh, 50 to maybe 80 meters deep so if you fall you're falling very far down 
and uh, if you're falling into those little valleys, there's erosion kind of in between the towers, you, you do struggle. You will struggle to get out um, if you can get out. There's also um, a brown hyena den down in the bottom of that valley. Oh, we may be losing our valley to the mist. You can see it moving in between us. Looks very ominous. Now let's give it a very, very cool effect to it. It's got a scary movie written all over it there. A nice cool weather for a little bit of a change. I think this evening is going to be relatively cold. So, a lot of mist is now actually <laughs> come into the, the footage here. All right, we're going to link you quickly up to Juma. <laughs> All right, we just had a monitor lizard that's going past. <laughs> Oh yeah, we just had a... Alright, so this is a monitor lizard that was going across the road, uh, <coughs> across the drainage line. <coughs> right here where the lioness is. Alright, but uh, yeah, we're just going to hang back a little bit just to take a look because I have to try and reposition here yeah, and uh, we all have to uh, wait, but... <laughs> But yeah, those monitor lizards, it uh, looks like a Nile monitor coming from twin dams. So sometimes they'll jump into the drainage lines and going for like little sand frogs. Hey, welcome back everybody. We are still bumbling our way towards Buffalo's Hook Dam where we're gonna go catch up with the three-banded plover and its nest and seeing what else has may, is maybe coming down towards the water. It's amazing that Cedric does have the elephants and that lioness around twin dams. So I was in that area but I mean he's around there so I'm gonna head into a different area and see what possibilities lie ahead of us. The wind is also has started to pick up, which it is quite nice for us. It's this nice uh, breeze on our face, keeping us a little bit cool. If we do park in the shade, it will be fantastic. Also, it would be quite nice if there was a herd of buffalo that made an appearance. Tracy, the two male leopards, so the one male leopard, Tortoise Pan, he went um, south into our southern boundary, so he is not in the area. We haven't seen tracks of the other male leopard that was in that area, uh, so he could maybe still be on the carcass. Um, they did kill the warthog, and um, Cedric did say that. Ooh, Sorry, there's some uh, very, very fresh leopard tracks here from a female. This leopard can't be far from us. Sorry, I'll get back to your question now, Tracy. I'm sorry, I just want to just want to try and see where she's gone off. This leopard's walked here now, now, now. I'm gonna turn around and just slowly drive down the road because 
I don't think this leopard is far from us. So let's have an abrupt change in plan. And this leopard might have just moved off the road now, now, now. Um, so Tracy, just getting back to your question. So the Mawati male, he could still be around um, that warthog carcass. Cedric did say it looked like the warthog was dead. And so, I mean, he might be feeding on that, but tortoise pan is definitely gone into little Gowrie. So I didn't see any tracks a little bit further down the road, which means that this leopard either cut off that way or that way. Unless I wasn't looking at the tracks on the ground and I was too busy chatting away. But what I might do is drive further down this road and then come back slowly up again. Maybe it's tracks of Tlalamba. Who knows? But it would be amazing to find another leopard. It did look like it was female leopard tracks, just a lot smaller compared to what males are. So Yvonne, the, the way we tell how fresh tracks are is, I mean, in the sand that we're driving on now, it is quite soft, the sand. So we tell the freshness by like looking at the, the lobes. So I mean, when the leopard walks, it leaves a very distinct track. And I mean, the edges can often be quite sharp just after the leopard has walked there. Um, there is a little bit of a breeze and when I looked at those tracks I could see like the de definitive three lobes at the back and it was almost quite sh like sharp the track if that makes sense like there's a, a build up of sand that you'll be able to see within the um, within the track and then that can often tell you how fresh it is if it's older you might see like sprinkles of dust that sand that's been blown by the wind you might even see insect tracks Okay, I'm gonna send you over to Cedric quickly. All right, yeah, so we just, uh, looks like she just got up. She's busy snarling at that monitor lizard that came across the drainage line. You can see Chella. Mmm, but I think, oh, I've got a feeling she's got youngsters in there. But look at her, she's snarling at it. Oh, she, come and lie down here. Oh, she's beautiful. So she's from the Nkuhuma Pride. And looks like she's broken off from the Pride now. No idea why. As I say, it looks like a teat. It looks like we've got milk bags. You know, you can see the bottom. It looks like uh, there's milk. It might be in those little pouches there in the teat. So, hmm, this could be very interesting. Am I going? I think she's not too happy with that that now monitor that just came up here now. Yeah, no, she's pregnant. That is that is um just looking at how it's sagging down her belly from where we are now. Just remember she mated with I think the black dams, so she has a mate with the black dams. At the time on the airstrip, she was mating with the black dams with one of Amber Eye's daughters. So. She's just watching, making sure that monitor is not going to come and spoil her afternoon. And she's not going to go for it. She's just snarling at it now, once or twice there. Come and lie down, my girl. Rest. Rest for us. Don't worry about us. Rest there. It's 
DVD. Wow, wow, wow. That is fantastic. It's a first time sighting for you. Uh, yeah, I guess you're talking about the Null Monitor that's approaching um, Chiller, the Lioness. Yeah, sometimes I'll go for it. Okay, there we go. Go relax, girl. Go relax. Ooh. All right. But she's been lying here quite a bit at the moment. I'm just looking in under this bush here, but we'll just double check here. Yeah, you can see the back end is very thin and it comes out quite like big towards where she should carry cubs. Even she's going lying down very slowly. Wow, oh, hey, imagine, imagine, and you can see she's been lying quite a bit under this bush here uh, to the right of us. It's a, a spike thorn. I just want to see, thinking you know, you'll see. Um, I'm just going to show quickly with my hand. So, this, yeah, that spot there. And under behind all that grass there as well as that spot there behind there it's very very flat she's been lying there quite a bit so I'm just going to keep a close eye on this area for the next uh, few days for sure for sure Sandy, when the female uh, is going to have cubs, um, they will try and break away from the pride. <clears throat> They'll go on by themselves, so they can get just that little bit of personal time. And when they break away, they go on by themselves. They'll go look for places exactly where we are here now, because Chella, this lioness, has had her cubs already in this drainage line, a little bit further north from where we are now. And um, once she has her cubs, yeah, a cub or cubs, it depends. Um, She'll have them, she'll have a little bit of, uh, how can I say, that little bit of a bond with her cubs for the first few days. And then she'll go out and start hunting, maybe by herself, or she'll sometimes join the pride, leaving the cubs hidden away at that den site, in the thick little bush, under a thick bush. She'll leave her cubs there, she'll go and join the pride on a hunt. Hopefully they're successful. If they're successful, she will try and eat as much as she can, and then she'll come back again and to go and let her cubs uh, suckle from her very very important for her to uh, feed because she needs to produce that milk um, sometimes she won't do if she's got the opportunity to bring down something by herself she'll do that for sure and then she doesn't have to go all the way and look for the pride oh she's seeing it again she's not happy with it again she's snarling at it i think this monitor lizard is baitom <laughs> baitom <laughs> uh, monitor lizard, I don't think it's a good idea what you're doing. Maybe turn around and head back to Twin Dams. You don't want to mess with this lioness. Oh, sorry, I'm just trying to look under the bush. Grumpy old man, yes. What's the rough tone? You see the grass moving there? Yeah. yeah. I think it's mm. Grumpy old man, yes. Uh, we are due for some lion cubs. Leopard cubs, lion cubs, hyena cubs, any cubs. Yes, we'll do. I mean, we've got our own little cub there at, uh, at camp, all oh, muscles and paw. So now we just need the wild, the wild cubs now. There's a little cub here. There's a little cub. There's a little cub, right here. Right here, Paul. There's a little cub, right here. 
There's a, there's a little cub right here, people. Here's a cub. Here's a cub. See the movement? Paul? Paul. Yeah. Guys, we've got a cub. I've got a line cub. We've got a line cub. Oh my word. Chella has given birth. Oh, I can see one little cub. Okay, we'll have to close this. This is crazy, guys. This is ridiculous. Look at the little cub face. Look at it. <gasps> this is born today. I just wanted to say, Paul. Oh, I've got shit. I've got, I'm almost crying. Sorry, guys. Um, all right, we've got to close the sighting. We've got to, we've got to close the sighting. Uh, we will just spend the last little few minutes here, and we're going to close the sighting. I just see one cub at the moment, everybody, right next to me. This is Ayoba. This is crazy, everybody. I can't believe it. I just felt this is this thing. And it's just moving around there. Look at it. There's a little face. Oh, Chela, well done, girl. Well done. All right. What a find, eh? What a find. Like a little black ear. So they usually have about four cubs. They usually have about four cubs, like, and, but looks like she's just had the one little one. Oh, this thing is so small. Oh, look, it's coming out. This is uh, yeah, very specific. Here comes. There, look, it's, coming, it's coming out. It's coming out. There, 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 there's a cub coming out. She's going. Chilla's going to go say hello to her cub. Watch, 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 watch. All right, guys. I just don't know. Yeah, um, this is some, but I don't. You know, with the uh, lioness and oh, yes, see. Uh, you know, I think yeah, I'm just gonna still keep very still here, everybody. I mean, we did not know there was cubs here, so this surprised us as well. No, we can, we can okay. This is just amazing. Wait, uh, Jared. Two. There's two cubs. Oh God, she's got two cubs. She's got the second cub has just come out. The second cub has just come out. The second cub has just come out. Oh yes. This. She's got two cubs. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what to say. So I'm very. Yeah. Um. I'm speechless at the moment. What drives are we having? It's just has been absolutely incredible. Well, I'm not supposed to use that word, but it's been amazing, zing, boom, shakalaka. We have found two little lion cubs. It's nice that Chilla is all relaxed with us here. And you know what? I walked into her. So I was like, what, maybe six, seven meters from her on foot. And it's amazing that she didn't come charging for me, especially when they've got cubs, because I found the tracks here in the, in the drainage line. No, she's relaxed now. Chilla's all relaxed. I think she hasn't even snarled at us or anything, so she's very relaxed. She's a very experienced female, this uh, Chilla. She's very, very experienced. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, she would quickly show us if she's not happy with us. She'll very quickly show us this. 
<laughs> yeah. But you can see, she's more worried about that now, that monitor lizard than anything else. And these two little cubs are just absolutely oh, adorable. It's going to remain very quiet here for now. You know, we don't want to, we don't want to spook them or spook her at all. It's not a good idea. We're going to try and stay, we're going to try and stay as ethical as possible. say that flattened area we were told in Paul it's like man that flattened area they, they must be she's been here for a while and uh, oh. now I'm not too sure exactly the age of these ones maybe like a maybe you know, two days a day I don't know maybe just today I don't think so it's just that they're so small <laughs> they are so small And imagine one day these two are going to be grown up into fierce hunters. Can't believe it. Huh? African sunset. Yeah. Oof, I know my, I, my foot is on the brake here for a long time now. I'm getting pins and needles in my toes. So I'm just going to try and release the brake very slowly. I don't want it all anyway. Yeah, on an African sunset, oh, I've got goosebumps. I practically had tears running down my cheek now. It was, this is something unbelievable once again. <coughs> Two male leopards going for a warthog, a lioness with cubs. Oh, well, and it's all happening. And think, thinking about that now, because we had those line tracks. Remember when we had the leopard track? When we had the leopard tracks going south, hey? Remember the other day? And we had, had that line track coming up here, and that was about when it uh, Mawati came past here. You know, and my reps were seen coming north. It was about six, seven, seven days ago. So, so you're right, yeah. So. Go with the jammers that uh, the eyes do open, eyes open after around about six days, and the eyes are just, just opening. Oh, look at that little yawn! Oh, yes. So, yeah, uh, that's six, six days ago. So, they say about the 10th of March. I'll put it down on the 10th of March. yawning all over there. <laughs> I think they are getting it's uh, quite hot there. But all yawning and hardly much noise is coming from there at the moment. Huh? Just but when I looked next to me and I heard that noise, I looked at William and I said there's some, oh, I can hear something again. You know, when I saw that movement going over there, I'm like, hey, here's something here. Two lion cubs. 
Right, I'm just going to quickly... Afternoon, everybody. Is that on Capri Manjima? Yeah, afternoon, afternoon. Uh, Matt, uh, just if and everybody please in the east. I'm just a little bit stuck here in the Mawati. I just uh, located on uh, Chela, um, a fuzzing gala with two Mampim puns, very much it's like a few days old. So um, the Mawati uh, from Gauri Main to uh, Twin Dams uh, to the Makuru Toma is going to be closed. Does that mean closing that one? Yeah, these things are like six days old. Okay, copy. I apologize, looks like the radio is making funny noises with my audio. Uh, Jared, if we can just try and link away for a bit, please. I just need to uh, do one or two things here um, with uh, the other guides before it becomes crazy here, please. Let's head over to Chad while we just quickly have to do one or two things, yeah. Wow, 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 wow. That is so, so special. Cedric got to find those lion cubs. Amazing stuff. Myself and Panda are a little bit jealous that he was able to, well, that he found them. We know, didn't get to see them, but amazing stuff, Cedric. And so we did spend a little bit of time in the area where we had those leopard tracks. And I walked up and down the road, couldn't see exactly where those tracks went off. Um, but myself and Panda decided that we will go back into that area a little bit later on. That leopard might have moved and then resting in the long grass somewhere around there. So it's definitely going to be a plan after we go to this waterhole. We will see if we can maybe go back into that area and find out who was walking along that road. It does look like it was a female. It's very, very small tracks. So maybe Klalamba is back on Juma. But we are still heading towards uh, Bufflesock yeah. Dam to, to try and see if we can find that plover with the, the eggs. I know it's uh, not as exciting as lion cubs are, but it's exciting nonetheless. Just imagine we find baby three-banded plovers. Wouldn't that be cute? I'm just taking a little detour on route towards the the dam just to see if there is anything that might be coming down towards the water maybe a herd of elephants maybe some buffalo bulls who knows who knows There's lots and lots of vegetation around here for those bigger grazing animals like elephants and buffaloes and rhinos. The grass is extremely long where we are driving currently. So it would be a good, good place for them to be in. Um, Liam, I would say yes. I mean, especially for animals that are burrowing. Um, if there's a lot of soil erosion or, like say, a lot of water runoff in an area, it could create a bigger eroded area. 
and could definitely Welcome back to Juma. We have made our way to Bafilsuk Dam where we have indeed found the three-banded plover that is now showing off her two eggs. And you can see there just below her, she's probably going to sit down now. But just below her are those two eggs and pretty much look exactly like a little rock. But how special is that? You can see she's actually got her beak open and it's just to try and cool herself down. I mean, where she is now, there's literally no shade. So she also doesn't want to run too far away from those eggs because she wants to protect them and incubate them. So she will try and cool herself down in a, as many other ways as possible than get into the shade. But that is a, oh. As I say that, she flew towards the water, but. Welcome back everybody and the three-banded plover did just fly off but we have found those eggs and it's a nice way to end the story from yesterday uh, that I was speaking about the she could be acting a little bit strange to try and deter a predator away from her eggs and there you can see the two eggs how special is that 
I mean, you can see they are very, very camouflaged. And there's no nest built. It's almost like she's made a little scratch in the ground or moved some rocks and then laid her two eggs there. And Cedric did just put some rocks on either side of the nest just to warn rangers that there is a nest there, not to disturb it. But amazing that we are now able to see those two eggs and I'll probably be coming here more regularly now just to see if I can see those eggs hatch. I mean they are very very small when they are and when they are um, born or when they do hatch. But come on. Oh, she's just carried, oh, we just missed it now. She just picked up a one cub now in her mouth and carried it. Oh. All right, as I said, I am, I am gonna do things very slowly, yeah? Um, she is gonna go lie down there. Um, as I said, we are keeping um, respect in for her, so if anything, any signs of anything that goes wrong, yeah, that we will, try and uh, avoid that because we don't want to cause any unrest with her but she is very relaxed with us very relaxed if she wasn't she would have snarled at us she would have pretty much given us a, a warning sign but the little one is one that's pretty much venturing away I might go have to go a little bit forward oh did you oh thanks so much Jared well done Right, I'm going to go just slowly forward because uh, then I'm just going to try and see if I can creep forward and that's it. Just let me know. <coughs> okay. <laughs> I think they want some milk. So Chella has just gone to lie in the thickets now. <coughs> and these little ones want to suckle. They want to see if the milk bar is open. Oh, okay, if they do go in there, it is going to be very tough. <coughs> and Jackie, yeah, well done to Mommy Chella. She's done absolutely amazing. I am so stoked. Not much from where you are. I can't get through that little gap. No, I can't. No. All right. Let's go a little bit because we're just going to do a little bit for it. How's your side? Yeah, I don't want to. Just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Okay, we're just going to stop just then. All right. Yeah, we're going to just. Uh, that's as far and then if they go further in there, we're going to just give her a little bit of space there. So usually what the procedures are for this kind of situation now, because, <coughs> sorry, because I'm poor in myself, <coughs> when we followed the tracks coming all the way down into, I uh, jumped off the vehicle and I followed the tracks pretty much going into this little spot here and we found her, uh, not knowing that she had cubs. Now, you know, we just want to make sure that uh, how many cubs are with her. We just want to make sure that she's all good and wild aside, it's all safe. As well as, as what we do now, we pretty much try and zone this area um, just to, you know, we, just from too many movement, too many vehicles coming through here. You know, as I say, we just want to give mom and cub their, their time, their space. Eventually, once the cubs get a little bit older, we start putting one vehicle in the sighting with mom being present during the daytime only. And then once they get to a certain age again, like eight, nine, ten weeks, and we'll maybe put two vehicles in with mom present just during the daytime. And so we kind of, kind of, uh, we almost say, I don't like using habituation, but we kind of use, show the <coughs> cubs that we are not an aggressive object, they don't have to worry about us, and then they get pretty much used to the vehicles. But we have just been very fortunate, very blessed with this moment. <laughs> Biting mom's paw there.
<laughs> oh, wow, we've got cubs. And what she'll do, if she needs to, as I said, when like earlier, before we actually even knew there was cubs here, what uh, she'll do, she'll leave these cubs in this little thicket here. She'll go out hunting, maybe join the Nkumas like she did the other day. I mean, when she was with the Nkumas, like two, two, three days ago, typical. Join them, if they're successful, the pride, have as much as possible, eat as much as possible, and then come back and uh, spend a little, maybe a day or two with the cubs again, let them suckle from her, make sure that they're safe. But they are very vulnerable when she leaves, and that's the only problem. The success the rate and the survival rate of a cub reaching the age of uh, about a year and a half, two years old, is very low. It's only around about 20, 25 <coughs> percent. Canine girl, you're most welcome. What a fantastic day. What a, what a fantastic day. I just want to quickly jump on here. Uh, Daniel. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, Daniel, this is, uh, we just uh, toured to just uh, landed uh, uh, one of them, a fuzzy gala, Chela from Kumas, and she's got two Mantuan Mantuans here. So we're just going to zone a little area in the Mulawati between Gary Main and uh, uh, Twin Dams, but inside the Mulawati. So you can go to Twin Dams, but don't you know, get a score. That's the uh, only updates we've got so far. Uh, neg uh, yeah, they went into Baobab Dam, they went north. Uh, I am live at the moment, but there's no problems. Uh, they went to Baobab Dam. Oh, they're venturing all over these little ones. Yeah, the other one's coming to the bottom here. <laughs> they are just moving slowly around. Like hardly a walking, more kind of almost like crawling. And walking. That little face. And his ears are still so small, they haven't even really developed nice ears. If you can hear them, I'm going to see if we can hear them. Now and again, they've got these little, little cub noises coming, coming through. It's still very, of course, when they're born, they got very spotty. And then you lose those spots and like three or four. Eagle lover, I think uh, if you're going to find a line with cubs like this, the joy in a person's uh, in a person's life increases like by a million fold. Uh, this is uh, just something spectacular, especially even for us guides to find something like this is such a rare, such a rare occasion. You can see the one is going to suckle now on top of mom there, eh? going to the teats. Well, the second one's coming in there for a fight. How about here's another one in front of mom's face here. There's three. Is it two there? There's, th there's three. Yeah, we've got three. We've got three cubs, everybody. We've got three. Two there and one in front of mom's face. We've got three cubs. Three cubs. Lucky number three. Are we going to get a fourth one coming through here somewhere?
Here he comes, everybody. I'm just lifting her legs, let the little ones get to the teats. So she's got four teats. And so they can only really have maximum four cubs. They won't have more than four. <laughs> now fighting over their teeth. Could you hear that growling of the cubs, that little noises? Two battling it out, and you've got this one that's just venturing around in front of mom's face. sitting back uh, and just taking this in at the moment. a little bit back here, yeah, sorry. Mm. They're fighting over their teeth. There's four teeth, I don't have to fight. Mm. 
And that's typical when they get to kills as well. When they become older. So it just shows you from cubs until adults always fighting over food. Match today to get to that uh, tea time. Yo. Just the two of them, the other, one, the other one's just all pretty much hanging around mom's area, not too bothered about this feeding mayhem. settled down there but we're not going to spend too much more time here we're going to give it another maybe you know four, four or five minutes um, the sun is starting to set and we're just going to rather leave mom and her youngsters to be so we're going to just enjoy enjoy this last few minutes and then we will make our way out here It's, it's amazing that Chilla, I don't know where she came from. She crossed our dam wall, Gary Dam wall, that's just to the west of our camp. I don't know if she came all the way from the north, came south and uh, left the Pride that side, maybe in Biffles Hook somewhere. And then she came all the way south straight to where her cubs are. So yeah, I rate, I rate these cubs maybe six, seven, seven days old. Matriarch wannabe, yes, it's a really <laughs> terrible table manners, but that's how it is, that's, that's lions, it's you know, you fight for your food, even if you're a cub and you have to fight for a teat, you're going to fight for it, and uh, it's amazing how much uh, patience a mother has got with uh, little cubs like this now, especially you've got three cubs, you know, and they're all fighting for that teat, and sometimes it can become quite hectic because they could actually bite bite the teeth itself with the little teeth and uh, sometimes it actually hurts the females and then they get uh, then you see them actually snarling when they try and suckle from the teeth and it looks like that looks like each one has got now a teeth and uh, they are very content with life and let them be enjoy my little ones All right, everybody, we are going to start making our way out of the sighting because we just want to rather let them be. It was what a sighting to have uh, for the afternoon, what a find. Um, but yeah, we will keep you updated, informed, and uh, yeah, uh, this has been magical, absolutely magical. So while we make our way out of this uh, sighting, let's head over to Chad at Bufflesuk Dam. Thanks very much, Sitters, and yeah, man, that is too special. Three cubs in the Mulwati drainage line, couldn't think of anything better. And so we are still sitting here at Buffles Hook Dam. The uh, three-banded plover has not come back just yet, but the hippos are starting to get a little bit active. 
They've been moving around a little bit. They've been yawning, they've been vocalizing. It has been nice to just sit and relax with this pod of hippos. I've just been saying to Panda now that I don't want to go too far from here because as that sun is starting to dip, I do want to head back into that area where I had those leopard tracks a little bit earlier on. I'm going to go see if we can find that female leopard. Maybe that three-banded plover left here and went to look for something to eat along the banks of the, the waterhole. But I'm sure she will be back at some point. I think that actually might be her running behind these hippos. Oh, there she is. Yeah, I'm sure that is her. Monique, so birds will often regulate their body temperatures by... Some, sometimes you'll see them um, cooling themselves off in the water. So they'll lie in the water and spread their wings out, make themselves nice and cool. But a lot of the times what they do is they'll keep their beak open and that almost releases the hot air from their body and then it will start to cool them down just a little bit. A little bit earlier on the three-banded plover was doing that and then as I was saying it looks like it's getting so hot it actually flew to the water and had a dip in the water just to cool itself down. That was quite nice to see. But those are probably the, the two main ways that I would say birds do cool themselves down. And there's also a water thickney that this three-banded plover is getting close to. Those water thickneys will also nest. Oh! Sorry. I just... <laughs> no problem, Panda. I was... Uh, Looking at the hippo and it just had a big yawn but while we are talking about the three banded plovers. It's always amazing to see the hippos yawning and how wide they open their mouth. It's almost like 180 degrees they'll open their mouths with those massive teeth of theirs. Nick, I have seen the baby hippo here a little bit earlier when we were sitting just relaxing, enjoying the view. So the hippo, baby hippo is here. And we'll spend a little bit more time here for you, Nick, and hopefully able to show you. Oh, there it is. Is that it? I think it was on the, the back of mom. I'm not 100% sure. Let's wait and see, Nick, if the mom does come up again. There's also a baby there. Sorry? Yeah. It looks like there might be two babies. I don't think it's just one from what I've seen, but we'll just wait. A little bit longer and see if the baby does make an appearance it'll be very tough to distinguish if it's the same baby that we have been seeing or if there are a couple of them but a baby hippo is a baby hippo still very cute
Well, we're just gonna spend some time here at this waterhole. And there is nothing better than just sitting at a waterhole, taking in all the sights and the sounds. And what better way to do it than with a beautiful big pot of hippos. Baby hippo, there you are. And you're gone. <laughs> Baby hippo doesn't seem to be spending too much time out of the water. I was saying a little bit earlier that often you'll see the baby hippos will spend quite a lot of time on mom's back. Often when it's very deep and the baby hippo can't stand, then you'll often see that it will rest on mom's back. So whenever mom comes up, then the baby comes up. So Sandy, you're asking how long a baby hippo can hold its breath for. So, I mean, an adult hippo, will uh, probably be able to hold its breath for four or five minutes. So I can only imagine that a baby hippo would be able to hold its breath for much less. So I wouldn't want to lie to you, but it would probably be a minute or two. Definitely not as long as a, an adult. And just not having the the biggest lungs compared to huh that's very interesting thanks very much I'm just getting some uh, information that uh, baby hippos can hold their breath for about 40 seconds underwater so I wasn't too far off 20 seconds or so I did say between a minute or two, so maybe 80 seconds off. And also, apparently after mother hippos do give birth to youngsters, they actually spend a few days in the water with them, suckling them before they do then leave the water to feed. That's something I didn't know. I would have thought she had to feed every day to produce the necessary nutrients in order to keep the milk nutritious. So technically speaking now, we should see that baby hippo every 40 seconds or so. Panda, there is, I don't know if that one at the back, I think that's where the baby, baby one is. So, I think so. So I'm just still trying to distinguish which one is the baby, the smallest baby. But it does look like this one Panda is on at the moment. We'll have to wait uh, at least 40 seconds <laughs> to see maybe if that baby does pop up. I've actually done some research on hippos before and they found that hippos in some areas when it's a much bigger open system like the Kruger National Park Hippos can move up to 40 kilometers in one evening to look for the most nutritious grass. So I mean, that would be 20 kilometers away and 20 kilometers back. It's a pretty fair, I mean, it's quite a, a big distance for such a big animal. See the baby there. There we go. Nick, I hope you are still watching. This looks like the baby, baby hippo that you were wanting to see. So 
there also is a chance that that leopard the tracks that we saw that female could come down towards the water to have a drink and that's what myself and panda were discussing while you were watching that amazing sighting unravel with cedric it would be amazing for a leopard to come down to drink while we are just sitting here relaxing enjoying nature <laughs> How amazing. Always lovely to hear the hippo noises. So there is a, a little friend that I can see poking his head out the top of the trees there. It is quite tough to see, but there's a giraffe that's also come to join the party here at Buffalsook Dam. It would be very special if that uh, giraffe, if that giraffe came down to the water hole to drink. That would be lovely. It does look like it is a male giraffe. So it is most likely just by itself. Welcome back everybody and we have just spotted a, oh we had we had a giraffe in picture. It does seem like it has moved just a little bit. But I was just saying now that it would be very special if that giraffe had to come down to the water to have a drink. And it's not very often that you do see giraffes coming down to drink. They're not very water dependent. And just like camels, they are able to hold water and they get a lot of their, mo their water from the leaves and trees that they feed off. So they won't make a mission to a water hole specifically to go and drink. If the water though is available to them, they will then take that opportunity to drink. And our three banded plovers also made an appearance back at the nest. Sorry, Pandy, doing all tricks and gymnastic work back there just in order to show everybody <laughs> but there's that three banded plover now sitting on those two eggs Reese, the hippos wouldn't chase the giraffe off from drinking I mean there's enough water around for the hippos and for the giraffe and things like that so, I mean, it's, it's also that they're not competition to one another. So it wouldn't be necessary for those hippos to chase the giraffe off. I have seen it, however, before where um, hippos have chased rhinos away from water holes just because it was a very, very small water hole. And there was literally no space for the rhinos. The rhinos were looking to wallow on an extremely hot day. And that's the only time that I've really seen hippos chase animals. I've seen um, elephants chase hippos before in the water, also in quite a small little water hole. But I mean, hippos are very tolerant of other animals around, especially if there's enough space. So, like if an elephant comes down to have a pool party here, the hippos often will move to the opposite side of the water hole just because they know I mean, the elephant's much much bigger compared to a hippo and how beautiful is that view that we've got of this three banded plover now beautiful lighting coming off all the stones there fantastic stuff I 
I really do hope that this, these uh, eggs hatch before I end my time here at Juma. It would be amazing to see. I'm not 100% sure how long the incubation period is for eggs. I'd have to do a little bit of research. While we do sit here and enjoy this peaceful scene, I'm going to send you back over to Cedric and get an update for you. All right, thanks, uh, Chad. I have left uh, Chella with the three cubs. Uh, let her be and uh, let them have their, their, you know, their time together. I think it's very, very important that we also show that respect to the lions and to the cubs and all that. So.
Right, uh, do apologize, losing my signal there again. I don't know, Rusty was brilliant until this morning and now Rusty is just seems like uh, it just loses signal immediately. So, yeah. Anyway, you're back with us again and uh, as I was uh, telling everybody about uh, just our experience now, I think it was something phenomenal, something brilliant. Uh, it's, uh, and I'm so glad that we could share it with everybody all around the world on a lioness that's uh, got three young, young cubs and a very well-known lioness, Solchella. And, um, you know, we all love her to bits. And it's my favorite lioness out of all lionesses. Why? Because she did so well with the sub-adults when, um, about two years ago, making, like, taking uh, those sub-adults under her wing and uh, showing them where to go and how to hunt and all that. So, um, yeah. That was almost, it was uh, tear-jerking that for me, um, but it was uh, fantastic. But yeah, we will, I'm hoping sooner or later, we're just going to give them some time just to grow up a little bit, give them uh, mom and uh, cubs some good time, quality time. And then we'll take a look there again, but uh, for now. There she goes. She's, she's, she's wasted. This, you, oh, oh, careful. Oh, she made it. She made it. She's just going to make sure that thing doesn't slip. Oh, my girl, you go. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. You're doing so well. Come on, girl, you're doing so well. There she goes again. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. She's holding on. Oh. <laughs> like a cat, she made it on all fours. <laughs> Welcome back everybody, um, we have left Buffelsok Dam and I'm now driving back down the same road that we saw the leopard on. And the sun is starting to set out in the far reserve. The temperature is starting to cool down a little bit and I am really hoping for a leopard that's in the road up ahead of us at some point soon but uh yeah the only thing is that i'm uncertain of which way that leopard went off the road did she go east did she go west she definitely didn't go south because i didn't see any more tracks i walked around quite a lot but there was a steenbok that was probably a hundred meters uh, away from where we saw those tracks and I said to Panda, I wonder if maybe she saw that Steenbok and then went into the long grass on the left hand side of the road. So that's my guess, whether it's correct or not, we'll have to hopefully find out at some point soon. But I mean, we leopards, they, they do often move and rest, move and rest, move and rest, move and rest, especially if they're moving around during the hotter parts of the day you'll find that I mean they'll move for 20 minutes and then take a 10 minute rest and then move again but at a time like this now it's starting to cool off so they could move for longer periods of time without resting Apologies, that's just uh, one of the rangers looking for an update. Uh, so I had the leopard tracks on Cheetah Cut Line going south towards Hippo Pools Road. So this is exactly where we had the tracks where I am right now. I think Jarrett was just giving the update to Cedric where the tracks were. Maybe you can come into the area 
and give me a hand. Like this morning, it worked extremely well that we are both in that wild dog sighting so that we could re-find them. And it will be a lot easier to find a leopard with two rangers in the same area. I'm actually going to drive down this road here and see if there's any tracks of this leopard maybe coming onto the road. So the tracks are probably 200 meters from us coming in this direction. Um, Trevor, so sure, I'm trying to think now, but I once drove guests at Pinder Mountain Lodge, which is an and beyond lodge, and they were there for four nights and I tracked with a a tracker called Betwal Matoele, the legend on Pinda. Um, and he loved leopards so much and he hated if the guests were first time safari goes and they didn't see the big five plus cheetah before they left. So the last morning they were flying out at I think about 12 o'clock. So we left the lodge six o'clock. We found female leopard tracks, drove around, drove around, nothing. At half past six, Betwal said to me, give me the radio. I'm going to walk and follow the leopard tracks. So I dropped him off at 6.30. At about 9 o'clock, I said, Beto, come, you've been walking now for this long. I think you should maybe come back to the vehicle. Like, I went to other sightings, left him alone. He said, no, I'm not leaving these leopard tracks. So he continued. I think about 10.30, he eventually radioed me and he said, Chad, I've found the leopard, come. And uh, you know, the guests, they just started crying when I told them that Betwal had found the leopard. And so, I mean, there, Betwal was on foot 6.30, 7.30, 8.30, 9.30, 10.30. So he literally followed the tracks for four hours and then was successful in finding the leopard. And we got to spend... So there's a spider web that just went all over me. We got to spend about 45 minutes with the leopard I had radioed the lodge and asked the lodge to go and pack their bags. They were happy to go straight to the airstrip. So we spent time with the leopard. They brought us a packed breakfast to the airstrip and we sent our guests off on their way with seeing the big five. And Betwal couldn't have been prouder. It was actually a, an amazing moment for, for me. I mean, to see how proud he was of himself and how happy he was that he could show these guests his tracking skills. And I'll remember that day for definitely the rest of my life. I miss the man himself, old Betwal Matwele. We worked together at Pinda Mountain Lodge for about two years. I had some incredible times in the vehicle as well as on foot tracking different animals. Lions, leopards, black rhino, white rhino, elephants, rhinos. Always made game drives fun. So I haven't seen any tracks along this road. It is quite a hard road though. So it would be very difficult to see small little female leopard tracks. But I mean, if she is on a territorial patrol, because of all that rain last, uh, in the last couple of days, she is most likely going to be walking on the road. It's the path of least resistance. Sorry, I'm just putting my hand up to stop the sun glaring in my eyes. But it is the path of least resistance and often territorial boundaries are roads or very prominent game trails. And so hopefully we do find tracks or if not tracks, it would be much better to see her, whoever she may be. But we 
are now coming back to Bafulsok Dam. We've just done a bit of a loop around to try and see if we can find any sign of this leopard. If not, I'll drive one road further down and then cut across, see if we can find her. Maybe as we left Bufflesook Dam, the leopard decided to come down for a drink. Okay. I'm gonna send you over to Cedric for an update. All right, so what I'm doing now, I'm just coming more into the central areas of uh, Juma. Um, I'm actually coming up onto a road called Niala South. I heard that Chad might have uh, leopard tracks, or it's got leopard tracks coming south from uh, Cheetah Cut Line, Hippo Pools, it's that side. So it might be for Tlalamba. And if it is for Tlalamba, I'm, I'm just pretty much going into the normal areas a little bit further south from where Chad is, just in case she's coming down this side. And you never know, maybe we bump into her somewhere along the line here. And let's take a look. Let's just take a look nicely here. I think earlier I was saying, before we lost signal, um, Paul and myself said this morning that I don't think we will have another amazing sighting like we had yesterday or uh, yesterday morning with the two leopards two male leopards or tortoise pan and mawati and we said ah, you know i don't think we're going to get us get any other shock in uh, in this stint you know for a long time for a long time and true as bob yeah this afternoon i'm um, poor and myself uh were once again shaking speechless fist pumping high-fiving Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Uh, <laughs> I can imagine naming the Cubs Setters and Paul. Yeah, maybe Setters, but Paul. Yeah, I don't know. It must be a very thin cub then. I will take you <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it's 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 just, uh, it's amazing. It's um, and I know that Steve found funny enough Cello, and she was a cub up uh, in uh, the Molawati as well, a little bit further north where she's had cubs. If I'm not mistaken, or did she, or did he find Chile with her cubs? I think I think he found Chile with cubs. Hmm. I must just double check on that. So it looks like she loves that uh, Mulawati drainage line. She loves it. She feels safe there. Well, Alaska Safari fan, I know that Chile, if I'm not mistaken, Chile is the oldest lioness uh, of the Nguuma pride. I think Chile is uh, sitting at the moment at about, I think she's 10 years old. I think she was born in 2014. I, you know, I'm trying to run back on, on, on ages now and all that. Please don't shoot me if I get it wrong. Uh, but I'm just trying to think, it's, you know, sometimes we have to store all those information for every character in our head. And um, so that's why I'm just trying to think. I think she's 10 years old, 2014. So, so and uh, Lou Yanda, our director, will find out for me if he gets any information. So, and uh, yeah, she's beautiful. She used to be known as Fluffy Chin because her chin was very fluffy. She used to have a very fluffy chin. Fluffy chin female, or Chella. Uh, she's my favorite. She reminds me a lot of that one female, as I told you many, many, many months ago, with uh, a female that used to roam this area that, from the Chalala Pride, or Bibi, the one with the short tail. And she just reminds me of that female, as well as another female known as Gorgi from the Styx Pride. And they really were 
how can I say, the leaders, the, 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 the grandmothers of uh, the pride, you know, they kind of made sure, even if it was their grandchildren, you know, they, they used to always make sure that they were safe, teach them, you know, the areas, the territory, take them under their wing and show them how to hunt. You know, it, it just seems like it's that, that learning curve for the cubs or for the sub-adults, um, you know, grabbing onto an older female and learning from that older female. And that's where Chella comes in. To me, chella has got that personality, that character um, of uh, being that kind of uh, female. So that's why she reminds me a lot of those uh, two females, Gorgi and Bibi, big time. Fantastic female. So, fingers crossed, hoping that those three cubs do survive. Yeah, Jill from the UK, that's exactly what um, Paul said. And Paul said, can you imagine now finding a pangolin? Uh, then we... Yeah, then it's done. It's like, uh, there, that's a wrap. Yeah. <laughs> then we go straight back to camp and go and celebrate the heavies there. <laughs> but I think even, even for with Chilla and the Cubs, that's uh, definitely a celebration for tonight. Definitely. Maybe I'm pouring my cell phone be on drive tomorrow morning. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, no. I'll just drink my tea tonight. My my Roy Boss tea. Alright, I'm on Central. I'm going to go slowly towards Gurry Dam. I'm going to pop my nose in a little bit there at Gurry Dam, just see if we get any any luck that side. Maybe old Columbo makes an appearance for us. A beautiful leopardess, which would be very nice to see her again. Yeah, and I'm thinking, what next for for myself? What next? What's uh, what's 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 up uh, on the cards for tomorrow? Um, oh, I'm with Panda tomorrow. All right, we'll wait for three days' time. <laughs> we'll give it a break for three days or two days. It's a beautiful sunset tonight. This golden color is absolutely stunning, stunning, stunning. Elegy, oh, we all hope that those, th those three little cubs uh, strive and do well for sure. For sure, and she's a good mom. All, all, all lionesses and leopardesses are good moms. So, just uh, by chance, sometimes sure, you get a, a, a rogue hyena or a leopard coming through that area, a baboon, and uh, mom's not around. I wonder how my colors doing. I think it's raining there. Yeah. 
Is it raining? But yeah, I mean, like for those three cubs, I think for Chella, she's a very experienced mom. She's a fantastic uh, keeper of cubs. Um, she has, she did lose cubs. Oh, when did she lose cubs? She lost her last litter not long ago. I think it was about uh, six months ago, five, six months ago. So. And she mated again with the, the black day males. Or did she also mate with the Kambula males? So we didn't see, I saw her mating with the black day males. So two male lions that's in this area that she had cubs previously with, but uh, lost them. So I did see her mating again with the black day boys. So that's going to force them to come back and forth here now, more so, because all of a sudden they're going to realize they've got cubs in the area. They've got to protect this area. They want to make sure that there's no other male lions going to come through here. So you're going to find that the, those guys are going to be a little bit, maybe, well, maybe a little bit more active on uh, on Juma. Oh, sorry, this. Oh, don't fly away, African hoopoo. Ah, a terrible spot there now. Ah. Yeah, exciting times, exciting times. Cubbies on Juma! <laughs> That's how I feel. That's how I feel. Yeah, Juliet, we are blessed. Now we are very blessed with uh, what, uh, what we've seen. Over the last two days, um, you know, it's, and what's even more amazing is that we can share it with everybody, you know, all around the world, everybody, just to just to show how special wildlife is, how amazing wildlife can be, and how amazing nature can be, you know, in general. And I think that is so. That's what's so wonderful about Wild Earth that we can broadcast these live things. Broadcast today, the first time to see those cubs live on wild earth i mean that is special that is something amazing all right let's sit sit here and i'm going to set a gurry dam a little bit and just uh, reflect on uh, what we've seen and uh, just over the last uh, i'll say 48 hours and uh, enjoy just the, the beautiful colors that's coming through with the sunset Okay, let's head over to Chad. Okay, welcome back everybody and we're still in the area where we had the tracks of that female leopard and I've just looked now behind there's a beautiful sunset happening there's actually a nice little spot up ahead of us where I'm gonna go and park and we can enjoy the sunset and then I'll give you a little update on what's happening and where we are. But we are still in the area of where the leopard tracks were. So I'm still hoping to find that leopard. Where it's gonna be best, Panda? Okay, I'm just gonna reverse a little bit, try and Is that alright? Yeah, so while Panda gets all s sorted there, how beautiful is that? So I was just saying now we are still in the same area of where that those tracks of that female leopard was. And it now gives us a nice opportunity to just sit, enjoy this last little bit of light and listen out for any impalas alarm calling. Maybe that leopard rasping 
or something to give away the position of that leopard. I'm just going to keep uh, quiet for the next minute or two just to watch this magical moment here. Isn't that just magical? Man, oh man, that's beautiful. With the trees silhouetted and the sky now turning that beautiful orangey red color. Leopard girl, I'm so glad you're very grateful for these special moments. And we are so happy as a Wild Earth family to bring these special moments to you. And a little opportunity to reflect on the day's work and the day's sightings. And I mean, magical that Cedric was able to find that female, that lioness with the three brand new cubs. The last 48 hours have been amazing on Juma. I mean, also not just Juma, also on Amakala. Unfortunately, it was raining there this afternoon. So they had to get back to a little bit of cover. But we have a beautiful sunset here. The panda man himself is doing marvelous work on the camera. I mean, I could literally just sit here for the next 25 minutes until the show ends and just admire the beauty of nature. I think I might just stick here for another couple of minutes and then go and see if we can get that last minute leopard. Just to wrap off Catterday. Panda, what's your favorite time of the day? Um, that's a tough choice between sunrise and sunset. <laughs> I think I'll go with sunrise. Sunrise. Panda's saying it's a, it's a tough decision between sunrise and sunset. 
but he'll have to go with sunset. Sunrise is a is a favorite for a lot of people, but if you're not a morning person, then you're not going to enjoy sunrise. So you're going to have to be up bright and early. But working in the bush, we are morning people, or you have to be morning people, as we, we do start. Leander is saying that he'll choose uh, sunrise for the birds and the dawn chorus. So everybody's got their own little preference. Maybe for the last uh, 20 minutes, Leander, if we can put a, a poll up on Twitter or on X, sunrise versus sunset, see what people prefer. It would be quite interesting to, to know what people do prefer. I would probably say a lot more people prefer sunset. Maybe when we cross over to Cedric, we can ask Cedric and Paul what they prefer. So, um Oh, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of funny comments coming through. Uh, Chad wants to know if you prefer sunrise or sunset. Oh, sunrise, like the sunrise. Uh, what, the, the safari? Safari. 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 I, I say sunrise. Uh, sunrise safari to me, the big thing about a sunrise safari is that um, I feel that animals at night like your nocturnal animals your cats and that's all walking around at night time doing their thing and early morning when you get out and drive your safari and then you can see all the tracks going back and forth and you know it makes a story there's like a nice story to it I like that story especially if you enjoy tracking if you enjoy those kind of things to me so that's why I enjoy a sunrise safari but yeah sunset well like this afternoon I'll say well, well um, sunset this afternoon mm. <laughs> But yeah, sunrise, I think it's always a, uh, always a nice one. Because you never know what you're going to get around. Well, you never know what you're going to get around the next corner on sunset. But just sunrise, it's just new. It's been so much time before anybody's driven those roads. Like the whole night, so. All right, so I'm going to go to the northwestern corner quickly. I'm going to go follow us. I'm just going to go see uh, anything. Maybe those wild dogs has come south again. So I'm going to go and pop my nose here in the northwestern corner at Sandy Patch and uh, have a bit of a, a look out for that. Damien, uh, it usually takes about, you know, sometimes, I say for those like cubs to lose spots, uh, like the ones, the ones on the head much quicker, but the ones here on the inside of the leg, it's uh, the inside of the leg and all that, that's going to take a little bit longer, you know, that takes maybe like, I've seen lions at four years old still having those like kind of striped spots on their sides, so that takes uh, a lot of time. But you know, the ones on the head and on the back and all that, uh, a few months before they start losing that. be after like six weeks before those cubs as well they will before they start eating solids so six weeks before they start eating solids for my mom might have something for them or maybe they mom takes him to a little kill you never know
See, and the Talamati breakaways, they were seeing that, uh, that lioness with her two sub-adults, they were seeing, can you believe how far, they were right north, far north, they are on Biffelzook Manieletti boundary, <laughs> far north. So last night they must have traveled through here, through Juma, and they went straight north, some of the tracks that I had, and up they went. So yeah. It just shows you how far lions can travel at night time if they need to. That's why for Chella it's uh, she should pick up on her pride. She'll go, oh, oh. It's just call like that. Once she starts calling out for the pride and all that, they will answer back at her. And then once uh, they start answering, she'll head exactly into that area and uh, to try and see if she can uh, join up with the pride and go out on a hunt with them. Or maybe the pride has already been successful with a hunt and then she can just jump in there and uh, grab her share and also yeah that's that's what's so amazing just to follow this situation now just to follow the story now so we'll see Alcella will be going back and forth out from that drainage line on an almost a daily basis Twin dams will be early morning or afternoon or during the day. Go to twin dams. I'm sure you'll find a lion nest coming, you know, coming down there for a drink, and that'll be chiller. So some tracks here. Nope. I thought I saw something, something nice and fresh there, but uh, yeah, it might have been just the wild dogs from yesterday, or well, not yesterday, this morning. Sure. What a beautiful evening. Weather-wise, stunning. Absolutely stunning. Not nice and warm. Not too hot, not too cold. Sun's gone down. It's getting a little bit darker. Hopefully we get lucky with a last-minute nocturnal animal here somewhere. We haven't seen an owl for a very long time. I don't know when last I've actually seen an owl. Oh, ah. All right, well, we're going to head slowly uh, to the clearing just south of our camp. Uh, let's head over to Chad. Yeah, sitters, I'm also scratching around for a last minute something. Doesn't need to be anything specific. But we have driven around this area quite a lot and there's been no luck with those female leopard tracks. So that might be our plan for the morning. And we go back into that area. We've driven now all around. So we know where we've driven and we can maybe then see if her tracks are over our vehicle tracks. We can then start following from there. But I know everybody's been very, very hyped about these cubs being born on Juma, which is uh, amazing. And Cedric's just talking about them. There was actually, there's a ranger that I know, Marisho. He works at Mala Mala. And I was in a lion sighting with him once and I left the lion sighting. The guest said that they were keen for coffee. It was hot. The lioness started to settle down and I was like, okay, there's not gonna be anything that happens here went for coffee it wasn't 15 minutes we had coffee got up from coffee break asked if there was any updates Marisha said uh, Chad there's this lioness that you just left has now given birth to a cub and I I just like I just went 
I had no emotion. I was like, what? He's like, no ways. I was like, go again? He's like, yeah, the lioness just gave birth to a cub. So Marisha witnessed this lioness giving birth right in front of him in quite a thick drainage line also, in the Kapin River. And I was a, a little bit, a little bit mad with myself that I did leave. But I mean, I thought, ah, oh, you know what, nothing. We knew she was pregnant, but it didn't look like she was gonna give birth right there and then. And Marisha also didn't move the vehicle, the lioness gave birth in quite a, like a, open section in the drainage line and then she picked up the cub and walked away and then Marisha was in the sighting but I mean that is very very special to see a predator giving birth there was also a ranger at Pinda I told the story I think the other day Sibu and Sele has been there for about 30 years he saw a cheetah giving birth also just came around the corner saw a cheetah amazing Next thing just gave birth to, I think it was two cubs that he saw at giving birth to. How amazing is that? And I've yet to see any births. I would even be happy with an umbrella birth. gonna stop here and just give it a last minute listen and see if we can maybe hear anything maybe those black damn males vocalizing or maybe a leopard rasping that is the, the last 10 minutes of drive now and it would be a last minute surprise hopefully somewhere excuse me And while I do just sit here and listen out for a little bit longer, I'm gonna send you back over to Cedric and see if he's got anything on his side. Coming mm. through, but very quiet this side, very quiet this side, so now I am gonna turn south and go to Voyatilla Access and head slowly back to our camp area. Definitely head back that side. I see at least tomorrow is nice and cool. I think they say it's like 25 degrees Celsius tomorrow. And cloudy. which makes it nice and pleasant. Sounds like I'm dragging a branch. Oh. Hmm. Alright, let me just... Tell me see! Oh, I just want to, sorry, I just want to try and see if I can get rid of this branch. It's underneath the vehicle. Ah, oh, there it is, it's out. Bye! Tammy C, yes, Chilla and the Three Cubs has been the surprise of the day. Surprise of the day. Oh yes. Not even the surprise of the day. It's been the surprise of the of the year for me. Sure. Actually the surprise of the uh, sense of wild earth. I think that's been one of those ones, yeah. Yes. I'm still smiling. I don't I, I think like uh, I've just got like this it feels like I've got a permanent smile on my face. 
since the, that sighting. It's seemed like no matter what now, I uh, I don't think I'll ever have uh, an upside down smile for for the next uh, few months after that sighting. Yeah, yeah. Just have to think about that. Hmm. No, thanks Secret Marsh. Yeah, look, I'm not, I'm just, I, I think it's just, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, it just takes a little bit of perseverance and I know, like, that's why, I, for myself, we always, uh, we always feel that we can, you know, I can just say, continue following tracks. We, it feels like, you know, we always chat to each other and, uh, and it always works out. Perseverance and just the, the patience of certain things and uh, just like this afternoon patience pretty much uh, uh, and it all worked out perfectly for all of us so yeah what's on the cards for tomorrow hmm <laughs> I'm not too sure what's on the cards for tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Tomorrow's another day. We'll, we'll cross the bridge when we get there. I think that's a, that's a that's a good way to approach tomorrow. We enjoy the present. We enjoy what's happened today, and that's why the that's why it's a gift. Yeah, the present is a gift. We were gifted with uh, amazing sighting today. Um, So uh, just uh, uh, <laughs> it's a yoba. I also haven't, I haven't, I haven't seen like an African wildcat or a white-tailed mongoose for, for quite some time. And we usually find them around here, but I think because it's still a little bit light, maybe like in an hour's time or two hours time, you might get, get lucky with those nocturnal animals. But uh, I think for now, I think it might still be a little bit too early to pick up on, uh, on those nocturnal critters. So you'll find as soon as we start going further into w winter, in other words, our nights uh, um, become, uh, well, it starts becoming night a little bit earlier. So you'll find then all of a sudden, uh, in a matter of a month's time, now would be pitch, pitch dark. Not even a month's time, I think about like two weeks' time. This time of the evening will be pitch dark. So. I mean, by that time we'll be able to start getting those uh, little nocturnal animals coming out. Maybe get an owl or two. Owl. An owl. Owl. Jenny, it has been a glorious day. It's been fantastic. Definitely, Jenny. I can uh, I can live this uh, afternoon's drive over and over and over again with no problem. <laughs> it would be so perfect. 
you know, and like now I still, I, I still close my eyes. I'm still like, when I close my eyes, I just see little cubs like running around in my like brain. Um, I think uh, tonight when I go to bed, when I close my eyes to go and sleep, I'm just going to dream lion cubs tonight. Oh, yeah. Those little cute little faces. Small little ears. Those ears are cute, I for. <laughs> They're so small. Oh. Yeah. So I wonder how many male and how many females are in that, uh, that litter there. It'll be quite interesting. That seems a little bit interesting just to know. I'm hoping females. I really do. I'll strengthen the pride a little bit more. I remain with the Nkumas. See if it's male cubs, you know, they grow up, they're gonna leave the pride eventually. And if it's females that will remain with the with the pride, so it's always nice just to see the girls grow up with mom. But yeah, let's see. We'll wait and see. Watch this space. Watch this space. But as always, our uh, sunset safari is coming to the uh, to an end on a marvelous cat today Saturday. Well, cat today, cat today, proper cat today today. Uh, thank you so much for all the comments and questions. Thanks for joining us on our sunset safari. And uh, yes, it is. Uh, it was wonderful just to experience that with everybody else. And uh, thanks for just jumping on board of on board the world's largest safari vehicle. And uh, please make sure that uh, tomorrow morning, uh, tomorrow morning, 6 a.m., our sunrise safari starts. And once again, join, jump on board with us, and to see what uh, what we have in store. You never know. Maybe these amazing sightings just continue. But from uh, the Wild Earth team, from Mpo and myself, thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening, further. We'll see you in the morning. Good night.